All right, welcome everybody. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's about 3:20 p.m. on uh, Friday, 5:14, 2021. And so, uh, without further ado, we're going to kind of get right into it. So we're wheels up and uh, looking at our map here today, and uh, we're sitting at about right now 254 aircraft up, which is about and uh, eh, we're about 40 higher than usual. Um, we've got uh, Night Watch up. Looks like he's been running across the border here a little while, uh, up on the north side. And uh, everything else is kind of quiet with the exception of uh, we got a lot of just a sea of, of uh, trainer activity going on here across Texas today. And so probably because we got such a, a beautiful day here in the great state of Texas that uh, uh, they're getting some a little bit of stick time in. So uh, I've had a couple aircraft look like they came in from the Navy from uh, Tercera Island out here in our at one of our watch locations. As you guys know, that along with Guantanamo Bay. Uh, don't know what they were up to, but uh, that is the second one that's been in today, coming into a Jacksonville Naval Air Station. And so uh, we'll kind of unpack things here left to right, and then uh, I am going to go into, just so you guys know, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Arizona audit stuff, uh, some findings that I ran across. Um, I actually was praying about it because I really wasn't sure if I wanted to actually push this out there uh, and step out in front of the bus. But, um, um, but you know what, I'm, uh, I just think it's time to go ahead and just do that. And so I'm going to uh, show you guys my findings. And I think you're going to find it very uh, suspicious, to say the least. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't believe in coincidences. And this is uh, definitely something that uh, we need to pay attention to. Because if this is a mechanism or a method that they're using to, uh, to manipulate votes or dox people, um, we should certainly be aware. So I will circle the wagons on that in just a second. So without uh, further ado, let's uh, kind of break it out. I'm look at the, the, the West Coast and then work my way uh, to the right. Actually, let me kick it off over here in Hawaii because I saw some activity going on here today. So it looks like we've got a couple C-17s that are uh, rolling out of, uh, out of the islands and uh, a Navy 737 that's also headed to the left. And let's see, looks like we've got a uh, little H60 going on. And I'm not sure yet, yeah, that's Oahu area. And and then that's that's gonna be one of your little um, dolphins, I guess that's a Coast Guard uh, air, uh, Hilo. And all right, let me get over here to California real fast. Now, I've been watching a lot of heavies today, seem to have a lot of uh, air refuelers up as well as um, a lot of like the C5s. I mean, I've, I don't know how many C5s I've seen going today, but there's one there, another one, another one. So um, don't see a lot of C5 really that often. I mean, it's just kind of a C17s we see quite a bit and the tankers, mercy, they've been all over the place today. So, uh, but we'll take a closer look. Look how we got a couple uh, P3s that are active up here in the Washington state area. Uh, C17 that's rolling inbound. Uh, same area looks like we've got one that's that's actually X filling from the same and we've got some helo activity right here in this general area those look to be uh, just south of Tacoma uh, that one right there's an Apache H64 and then we got a Chinook and then uh, we've got actually looks like a C17 on ground now right there as well uh, air refueler a couple fighters and let me get down here into Cali and it looks like we've got a C-17 that is just rolling out, climbing out. It's actually just passing 10,000 feet, um, taking off. And then we've got a, a C-5 that looks like it rolled out, same area. And another C-5, same area. So we've, we've in the last, oh, man, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, we've had uh, three heavies roll out of that area headed, headed eastbound. And we get down here into Southern Cal. And it looks like we've got a E6 that is uh, in the general area. So that's going to be one of your electronic suites that uh, looks like he's just uh, doing a little bit of a loop there. So, uh, but that is, um, yeah, it looks like he's headed, he'll probably circle, I would imagine, to head back up north here in a minute. But uh, he's just over San Bernardino. And then we've got a little V22 Osprey right off the coast of San Diego. Uh, that's going to be one of your H-53s. Uh, let's see, that looks to be, that's a super stallion, so it's probably going to be Marine Corps. Got that refueling boom on the front, so I'm just going to go with a MARSOC. Um, could be recon, could be, no telling, but anyway, 
Um, but yeah, looks like those guys are up right now, kind of rolling along the border area. And C-130, another fighter. That actually fighter is showing on ground. So that would tell me uh, with it on gray. So we probably got a, um, a carrier out here. And that thing's doing either touch and goes on the carrier deck or um, or he's getting ready to launch. So, or he just landed. Either way. But that's what you would see when you see a carrier off the water like that. So when he's sitting on ground. Okay. Let's head left. Uh, sorry, from the left to the right. And uh, don't have much over Arizona right now. We'll go back to that here in a minute. But... Uh, but if we look at the Colorado area, it seems to be pretty busy. Uh, got some air refuelers up, a couple helos. Uh, there's another E6. So that's our second E6 up right now. Looks like that thing just got airborne a little while ago. It's at 28,000 feet, headed to the west. And two ship of C-17s. Got another C-17. That one looks to be headed eastbound. And these two are probably, if I had to guess, are going to be up, headed towards the... Uh, Seattle area if I had to guess so these are all trainers in here just it's a sea of trainers so like I said it's a beautiful day here in Texas so they're just getting some stick time in and uh, got an air refueler a couple a wax uh, I've got two a wax centuries up right now so uh, those not familiar with what an a wax is that's gonna be well that's not what I wanted to do let me back that up um, that's gonna be basically a, uh, think of it as a air traffic control in the air. Okay, so it's base, basically just um, guiding and um, watching military aircraft uh, flights. Right. So, so that's what that's doing. All right, back to it here. Uh, looks like we've got a air refueler uh, tanker out over this general area, which is. They're in that, that little marshalling pattern is what they do, kind of in a hold. So if we go up here and we look at our air refueling tracks, we'll see if we've got anything. Yeah, there's one right here and one right here. So they're just off just off center line for the, uh, the air refueling track. Uh, my guess is they're going to be in a holding, and then they'll probably run along that, that line. Uh, and uh, we've got a couple, two. So those are little lawn darts, T-38s. Uh, it looks like we got several two ships there. So two ship and a two ship. So those guys are flying tight and looking over here off our coast florida's kind of quiet today actually really quiet so let's get up here these are air refueling boxes because i've got those on that's kind of a i haven't seen that up until this year uh, that's kind of a uk thing to do where they just give them an area where they just kind of of uh loiter in in that instead of following a track and an altitude they just kind of hang out in that box and they've got free rain at a certain altitude. So uh, it's kind of an interesting concept. I think it may be better than actually trying to hold a line due to weather and things like that. So it gives you a little, little flexibility. And uh, there's a tanker right there. It looks like it's headed southbound, just north of Harrisburg. And we were looking for, you notice it's just not a lot over DC right now. Um, I've been looking for air refuelers up in this general area since the weekend because we, we had one that was actually circling over DC. Um, I think what's happening now is you've got uh, the aircraft are, uh, they're probably coming out, out here outside of the area and then coming back in over DC. So then you've got your tankers um, fueling them out here in this general area. Um, another C5, that one looks like it's coming back from across the drink. Yeah, definitely making that big arch right there. And that's going to be a little Canadian uh, CL60 coming inbound. And then that one looks to be X filling. So that's going to be a Canadian military headed outbound. So, all right, that's going to be our US map. Now, let me get over to our TFR so we can go kind of run through those. Um, let me back up. I was looking at uh, Kwajalein a little while ago. And so, over the US, kind of get into this. Now, we do have a unique uh, TFR up here. This looks to be tied into uh, some type of a radar test, but that's a security TFR. Uh, don't see those too often up here in, in Alaska, but that's uh, that's tied into, uh, I guess that's clear Air Force Base. And so, all right, let me back out of out of Alaska here and get down over this over the continental U.S. All right, now um, we do have flashbang, and I'll show you a schedule here in just a minute. But it looks like flashbang is actually uh, going to be going up to Delaware this weekend. I think he's scheduled to depart tomorrow. 
Uh, and then, of course, we've got two that are really interesting. These are up, uh, which is, uh, these are VIP TFRs. So that would indicate either Flashbang or Bob Marley are going to be up here. Uh, that, man, normally I would say that's tied in with, uh, with like a Trump, but I'm not sure. So I'll have to look at the schedule and see. But uh, my guess is probably going to be one of the other two and not Trump because that would be pretty, pretty unique. Uh, for them to give him a uh, a TFR right now, uh, I haven't seen them do that for any previous presidents other than Bush, and so um, for them to give that, that would be like I said, that'd be pretty unusual. So, all right, this is going to be I think it's an airshow TFR we have there, and let me see, double checking on this one, another airshow, and again, this is the season for airshow that uh, south of Atlanta is an airshow. Uh, that's going to be space operations here, and then down here by Miami is an air show, and then we've got, uh, that's going to be air show there. Uh, I think that's near Patrick Air Force Base, I believe, as I get in a little closer. Yeah, it's going to be Palm Bay, so that may be Melbourne, actually, but um, looks like they got an air show coming. And then that one, not so sure. Let me just double check what that is. I didn't see that earlier. It's a hazards and gas finning, okay? And so that's going to be pipeline stuff. And let me back up. That's going to be search and rescue active still. It's been up for a couple of weeks now, uh, TFR. These are also pipeline related, all of those. And then as you see these little tiny red dots around this area, those are still active TFRs that are over the, uh, the area for uh, immigrations. And so those are probably going to be little FEMA, uh, FEMA center locations. I just don't want you getting eyes on it, okay? That's a border TFR. It's been there uh, for a while. And so uh, fire TFR for hazards. And another one here just north of Phoenix is also another fire TFR, okay? All right, let me back out of the TFRs. Uh, let me take off the air refueling filter on this one uh, just because it clogs things up in case we come back to it. But uh, let's look at flashbang schedule. So today, uh, early start again. This guy's crack of donner. Uh, 9.50 a.m. at the Senior Living Center and uh, wrapping up about 4.30 today where he gets his uh, economic doom briefing. Uh, and so uh, what a way to finish the day, right? And uh, anyway, so uh, that looks like no travel today. So I would imagine the TFRs we're looking at, he's going to be bouncing out of the Senior Living Center Brown Zone tomorrow at some point. Okay. All right. So let's get over here to our flight tracker. Now I was zoomed in on the Phoenix area. We'll get back to that here in a little bit, but I'm gonna back up and show you, I've uh, got a, uh, actually an increase, a pretty big uptick in terms of the volcanic activity. Uh, we look at this one just for the ash alerts. Uh, so we've got this one that's out here. Uh, I mean, you can see that's gonna be, that's active ash that's actually spewing out of that volcano. And uh, I don't even try to pronounce these volcanic names anymore because uh they're just it's impossible like that one right there for example um but that's a japan one and um that one's been spewing for a little while Dukomo or Dukono is also another one that is actively spewing so if you get in close to these you can actually see the ash alerts that are that are giving them areas to stay away from and those are areas that for aircraft you'd want to avoid right you don't want to fly into that and that's cinnabung uh, those familiar with cinnabung that is a massive volcano and that bad dude spews some a lot of ash and so uh, that one looks to be active again and and this now the other day we went through we had five total and today we're, we're already we got five just right in here and so we've got this one down in the in Chile that's also going uh, another one here as we kind of get into south of Peru but you can see these are gonna be your ash alerts for that general area um, Looks like that's a pretty heavy ash coming off. Uh, you don't really see them go beyond that. It's kind of a large area when you really think about it. And then as we get up here, you've got another one uh, that's in Ecuador that's also got a pretty large ash cloud. Uh, looks to be the winds are taking that, uh, taking that westbound. And then up here in Central America and then Mexico. Mexico's got another one that's, that's popping right now. And uh, we kind of zoom into that. You can see that's kind of a that's a kind of a hot mess in terms of ash, that ash cloud. And so I don't know what the altitude is on that. Uh, normally you see aircraft avoiding that. So that would tell me that, that that ash is either 
uh, really high and these guys aren't affected by it on the rollout and takeoff or, um, you know, but it's probably not fallen onto the airport yet. So, okay. And then Guatemala's got two that are firing right now. So, um, so yeah, we've got, uh, things are really active on that plate line in terms of volcanic ash. So when you get the little black box like that, that's a little floater cloud. So, uh, of ash actually. So it looks like the winds right now are taking everything westbound out uh, over the water. Okay, that's where we are on va uh, volcanoes. Uh, the other thing too, I will tell you, just make note of the the, uh, the Google balloons as they, they are here. Uh, remember, these things are supposed to be uh, utilized for um, bringing internet to areas that don't have internet, okay? So just, just remember that. Um, some of the surveys and studies that I've been finding relative to the balloon research would indicate that they are also using those to do surveillance similar to the aircraft okay uh, and so these are definitely not rural areas so when i see them over now nah, i mean the water that's a little bit different but um, but over these areas like this where there are a lot of people and uh it just kind of makes you wonder right okay so let's get over here to, uh, let me back this one up here real fast. This is a uh, one that popped into Guantanamo Bay. This is gonna be a medevac that came in on Wednesday uh, out of Tampa, uh, the McDill area, okay? And so we've seen this one at Guantanamo Bay a couple of times now, and so over the past couple of years. And so it looks like they, they flew in and probably, let's just double check. Uh, yeah, they, so they, they flew in to Guantanamo Bay, picked somebody up, and uh, X filled them up to Norfolk, Virginia, um, and then back to Tampa. So that looks like they just took somebody up north. All right. Okay. And then we had another one that popped in today that I've been tracking this one for a while and I've not been clear on it, but this one actually came out of Opalaca into uh, Guantanamo Bay. Now remember Opalaca was Opalaca is another location that I think is starting to go active that we're starting to get eyes on uh, that uh, it used to be at one point back in the Cold War actually an agency location that they operated out of but um, but it has since in recent probably last month uh, started to pop up with flights that are coming out of Guantanamo Bay over to Opalaca and so this is yet another one and I'm gonna show you here in a minute the Maxwell flight that's also bumping in and out of there. So now keep in mind, this is actually a Coast Guard bird, okay? And so the C-2310 has popped onto our radar several times. We've tracked it all the way over to XPL Honduras from Guantanamo Bay. Um, and we really weren't clear on exactly who it was or what it was. Uh, when you run into a situation like that and you're not really sure where to, uh, you know, like you kind of run into a dead end, like this doesn't give us a lot of information. It gives me a number, but I really don't know what that number is associated with. I've got no aircraft data, okay? So <clears throat> what I find is go bump into one of the other apps and key in that number, and sometimes it'll help you determine what that aircraft is all about. And so in this case, uh, this is shown as a CN-35, and it actually gives me a little bit of uh, aircraft information, which is, a, it's an Ocean Sentry, which is a HC-1, 44 Alpha. Uh, it also gives you a lot of the places this thing has been located, like in and out, all of the flight, you know, the flights associated with it, uh, which is a little more than what we've gotten in the past from, from the other apps. So again, sometimes it's good to use multiple apps. I usually bounce across three or four to get different data points, okay? And so that said, this is gonna be our Huckleberry right here. And so you guys can see it looks very similar to a C-130, but it's only got two engines, but it's a high wing. Uh, high wing aircraft, there's your number right there, uh, C-2310, okay? And so that's how that thing ties in. But um, so that is not gonna be a prisoner transport. Remember, uh, going to Guantanamo Bay, uh, based on the National Defense Act, all the way back to 2016, I think it is, or 17, um, it is prohibited to fly prisoners to and from Guantanamo Bay um, using military assets, okay? All right, as we digress. So this is gonna be our Guantanamo Bay. You can see, looks like a normal schedule. We've got uh, Sun Country. That's gonna be your Uber for the uh, Legal Eagles heading in and out of the spa. This is gonna be Fort Lauderdale, um, and that's just gonna be uh, your normal contractor 
basically Uber as well, right? They're just, they fly in so many times a week, pick them up, take them back. And then that's going to be a Marijet, which is a, a Boeing 767-300. And uh, that's coming out of Charleston. It's just a supply run, okay? And so you can see our arrival board and our departure boards match, okay? Now, notice how that little uh, medical bird just kind of snuck in on us. Uh, they do that from time to time and notice it is not on our board anywhere. Now, if I expand the board, which is what you have to do, that's how you see it. Okay. And there, there she is right there. And so, uh, again, but normally when it's coming in as a med flight, it'll actually have a little medical cross here next to it on the ident. That one does not, although it does when I click on it, as you guys could see, uh, when we were looking at that a minute ago, uh, it definitely has a call sign of a medevac, okay, which gives it a priority, uh, priority flight status. Okay, now uh, let's keep on trucking. So this is going to take us over to, um, all right, now this is actually XPO Honduras, and I got ahead of myself here. Uh, that landed about a day ago, but this is the latest activity. And it's just actually a, a Bell helicopter that flew in. Now, we were asking early on, and somebody answered the questions. Uh, the question, that's why I had this thing zoomed in. But I was asking, what in the heck are these things on the skids? Uh, because it didn't make any sense to me, right? Um, but evidently, these things will, uh, I guess, they inflate. And so it gives them floating apparatus for the skids. And so now we know, all right? That's a beautiful helicopter. I imagine zinging through the mountains down there in uh, Nicaragua and, and uh, Honduras. That thing looks pretty spiffy. And so don't know who it belongs to. Uh, just know that it shows up down there in XPL Honduras on a pretty regular basis. So does this one right here, which is another uh, helicopter, right? And so is this. So we've got, uh, that's a Eurocopter there, but these are Bell, Bell helicopters. That and that one are the same route, right? So it's the same helicopter just coming in on different days. Okay, now let's look at the live Atlas Airs. Now, uh, the, the map is quiet down a little bit as we get into the evening on Friday. Now we do have this one, that's headed actually into uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, the ones we've been watching uh, are the flights that are coming out of El, Sal or, sorry, um, El Paso uh, that have been going back and forth to Kentucky. And so I've gotten a couple reports from folks. Uh, there's somebody that's actually trying to get some pictures uh, but they're actually pulling up to the jetway and my understanding is that people are getting off of the aircraft coming out of el paso and they normally wouldn't use a jetway for just an air crew they would probably pull it out and park it on the ramp and pull up an air stair and people would get off and they'd take a crew bus um, when you pull up to the jetway that's an indicator you've got passengers on board so that would tell me that immigrations is pumping people through kentucky because remember that's a daily flight El Paso to Kentucky uh, every single day, round the clock, um, seven days a week. And so uh, that's a 767-300. And so that is a large aircraft. That's a lot of people. And so I guess they are, I guess that's a processing center. So they're bringing them through Kentucky and then probably putting them on buses and sending them all over the state and, and to, into other states. So um there you go immigration services for you but um all right so this atlas air this is the one we're just looking at going into germany so we'll kind of bounce out of that phoenix air is pretty quiet today now i will tell you we had some movements um what i'm finding out is there's two aircraft that basically they just base they rotate across so one will come back to the u.s the other will be over there uh so it seems like they just are are, are switching locations and uh, they keep one in each location and you'll see that here in just a second as we get into it so uh, n163 pa that's one of our gray birds uh, for those new looking at this this is a beautiful gulf stream um, operated by phoenix air which is a, uh, a service provider for the agencies okay so dod um, and some of the others use those as well as some of the other agencies that i don't really say their names on here if i can help it okay and so this one is look like it landed about a day ago rolled out of malta over to greece now what you'll see is the other aircraft went the other direction but uh it starts out you'll see they're operating up here in paulding 
Uh, I think it's because there's some some activity going on in Cartersville where the runway is uh, not available. So they're doing some construction there in, in Cartersville, which is their home base operations. And so I think they're alternating between Paulding and, and Cartersville based on uh, runway availability. Okay, and so so this is uh, came out on Wednesday from Paulding, went to Terceira, which is one of our our prison site locations that we watch, and then from there over to Malta, Malta into Greece. Now uh, that is more than likely a fuel stop. Okay, now you're going to look at 173 PA, looks just like it, same kind of bird, and you're going to notice that it is actually and it's operated the same folks, Phoenix. Uh, but it's coming the opposite direction. So it, it started out in Greece, went to Malta, gassed up in Terceira, and then it went to um, into the brown zone from there. And uh, and then from brown zone, it flew probably empty back down here to Paulding. Okay. All right. So another Phoenix bird in 568 PA landed about two days ago. It was over in Mobile, Alabama. Don't really know what it's doing there, but it's a uh, Little white Learjet, uh, still a nice aircraft. Uh, definitely uh, better than most aircraft, um, but uh, not as nice as the Gulf Streams. So, uh, but this bad dude was down in Puerto Rico. And uh, the reason we're tracking this aircraft, as well as the last one that we were just looking at, is because both of these have shown up at Guantanamo Bay and over in Opalaca in recent weeks, okay? So that's why these guys popped onto our, our watch list, okay? Now, uh, in 549 PA, again, this is another one. This is another Learjet. Uh, again, beautiful aircraft. Rolled out of Tampa up to Cartersville, but if we go back and look at this, uh, it was actually down, it was in Kansas, went back to Cartersville, and then it went over here to uh, the Brown Zone at Andrews uh, Joint Reserve Base, and then uh, over to McDill in Tampa, and then back. So it looked like it took somebody from from Andrews down to McDill, and then and then departed, went back to home base. Okay. But again, the reason these things we've been watching it. You look down here Thursday, May sixth, Guantanamo Bay. Okay. And so this is one of the birds that actually flew somebody from D.C. down to Guantanamo on the the that week. Okay. All right. Now over to N312FU. This is gonna be your Maxwell bird. This is a beautiful little aircraft. Again, this is kind of like your little Gulf Streams, little executive jet, uh, nice platform, good range. And, um, but this bad dude is just uh, landed about 17 minutes ago and it was down in Columbia. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is its operating base. So that's where it's gonna go in and out of every time, okay? But, this is why I'm watching this one. Remember, we've been seeing all this recent activity into Opalaka, and uh, here we have it. This bad dude was in Opalaka on Tuesday, back into Lauderdale, but it came out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, into Opalaka, back to home base, and then again went down to, to Columbia, and then back to its home base. All right. So uh, again, this is one we just watched because it's it's almost entertaining because we know. We got agencies doing a lot of work and there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and um, uh, anytime they go international, it always makes you kind of raise an eyebrow as to what they're up to. All right. Okay, now let's get up to the brown zone. We'll look at, uh, at our aircraft. Now, these are the helos that are operated by the park police. This is in 22 PP, um, one of two that we're actually watching that are, that are pretty active. Now, yesterday, so this thing flew just double checks. Actually, this was today, six hours, 26 minutes ago. And it uh, looks like they, they rolled out of, let me back up just so you guys can see, kind of a, give you a, a feel of where we are on this map. But uh, the White House is, is right here. Okay, that's going to be the Senior Living Center. And then uh, this, is, this is where they normally operate out of. This is their police, uh, Park Police headquarters. They've got a little um, landing pad right there for the helo. Uh, but it looks like they flew down here along the water and uh, they had an interest in somebody in this general area. Uh, that's a lot of circling. I don't know. I, I think I'd get dizzy hanging out of the door on that one. Um, but uh, if you look at their altitude, it certainly looks like on their trip, they, they actually got down to ground level at one point and then took back off and, and came back to, to their base. And so... 
but that's one we watch. Uh, again, that was six hours, 27 minutes ago. And then this one is in 33 PP, which is another one. Uh, it's the same thing, Park Police. And uh, landed three hours, 57 minutes ago. And of course, notice that they, they really fly along the water areas. They're always watching the water. And I don't know why that is. Even this little tiny area here, they seem to have a lot of interest in that. And I don't know if that's an area of vulnerability to them. Uh, and that's why they watch it. Uh, but you can imagine if, if somebody, you know, you follow that waterway and imagine uh, if somebody got something, you know, a Club K or something, even a dirty bomb into this general area uh, and brought it right up here in the water, you know, barge or something like that, or a small boat, uh, man, I mean, that bad dude pretty much parks. Like I said, that's a White House right here. That's a water. Um, so you would think that's definitely from a security standpoint. I don't know why they would allow any boat traffic in there at all. Um, but yeah, so that looks like that's what they were doing. And you can see their altitude deviation here in this green line and then they landed. So, okay. Now um, I'm gonna show you an aircraft. I'm gonna show you a video. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some of the things and findings. So if you're just catching up, you're new, a new follower, um, uh, and, and you're just coming over to the channel. I just want to show you a couple things. This is actually operated by U.S. Department of Homeland Security. And this aircraft, as we kind of zoom in on it, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Stingray. I'm going to talk about Dirtbox, okay? And so these are two things, if you're not familiar with them, I'm going to basically give you a high-level briefing of it. And then I'm going to show you a video as to why this is a concern for us and why we should all be paying attention, okay? Now, if you go back to my last two sit reps, you're gonna see that we've been tracking and talking about FBI aircraft and how they are basically doing recon over the US, doing surveillance on US citizens, gathering data, utilizing these two platforms, Stingray and Dirtbox, okay? Um, but this is, uh, when you see this hanging off the side of an aircraft, and uh, note, it doesn't say anything about um, Homeland Security on this aircraft, okay? This is the kind of platform that they will use this and a couple other aircraft. But um, but these little Cessnas, you know, they don't when you're looking at the flight maps, you're not you're not going to see. So imagine this is a commercial aircraft. OK, they're not squawking as military. So when you're back in here, first off, let me back up a little bit. Um, when you're in here looking at the flight maps, OK, and give my, my screen a second to marinate while I'm, I'm talking to you. But um um, but when you're looking at the flight maps, this this is filtered by military, right? You go up here, you hit that U button, and it takes you into a military platform. A lot easier to spot aircraft that kind of pop out and stand out, okay? Now, when you're into a Cessna 172, you are not going to see... You'll Let me just show you why they're so easy to hide, okay? This is gonna be your air traffic that's populating right now for commercial. And that's what the Cessna 172 falls into is the commercial realm. And so you can imagine trying to look for a Cessna in the middle of this. That's probably, uh, let's see, we're at 6,000 aircraft up and it's still populating, headed up to seven. So we're at over seven. You know, you're probably, let's see, it'll settle out probably around eight, 8,500 aircraft, okay? Now imagine trying to find a, a Cessna 172 in the middle of, of all of that, okay? It's gonna be just about impossible. You're gonna have to zoom in, get in like pretty low level, and then you're gonna have to start looking at aircraft and kind of trying to sort through them over here on your in your filters. Um, but even then, it's just like a, it's just a hot mess. Now you can see there are a lot of small general aviation aircraft up, okay? And so, you know, pick one and look, you know, and if you click on it and you see like this thing flying circles, that's going to be one of your huckleberries. And you probably want to make note of that tail number so you can find it easier in the future. But yeah, this is, uh, you know, you start mixing general population in with commercial traffic and uh, it's, it's a needle in a haystack. Okay. But that's why it is so successful because nobody's looking for them. They pop up around 10,000 feet. They fly around an area. They collect all that data and traffic. And uh, you never know they're there because at 10,000 feet, uh, you're not going to hear them, you know, even if you're sitting in your backyard. So with that said, let me walk you through a couple things, okay? 
And so we've been kind of digesting the last couple of days. And like I said, I prayed hard about whether or not to even go and show this video because um, it's pretty compelling. And I think when you see what's been going on, it's going to really raise some eyebrows. OK. All right. So data facts. Let's just kind of go into this dirt box. We're going to talk dirt box and stingray. Uh, there are other ones out there, too, like juggernaut, a bunch of others. But these are two that are prominent and these are used by the agencies and um, as well as the military okay so a dirt box is basically uh, an avionics platform that, that can be mounted into anything it can be a, a van on the ground it can be mounted into aircraft okay and so it is it has the ability to capture data up to 26 kilometers max and they they even think it may go beyond that but they know for a fact you know 20 miles they can still grab data uh, especially at 10,000 feet, they're, you know, uh, easily still grab data, okay? Stingray um, is basically, think about man in the middle, and it's, it, it'll fly directly over cell towers, and then that data can just be extracted uh, from what they call a local area cell. And you could literally, um, for example, at this audit, they could pull data and dox just about anybody that is at that audit, okay? And it would give them all the all the data information they needed about the individuals and it also would tell them where their home tower is cell tower so they know where they're from and uh it's it's interesting the amount i mean you know these smartphones they hold everything they know more about you than you do right it tells you they know what time you wake up in the morning where you shop who your friends are where you go uh, how many times you go how often you go how much you spend what your bank accounts are it's all in there okay pictures family whatever um now Remember that the Stingray requires a dirt box to operate. So if you hear them talking about, oh, they've got a Stingray working, uh, for example, uh, there was an article that was put out by um, a Gateway uh, pundit that basically talks about um, uh, the Phoenix Police Department, their, their um, air support um, aircraft, right? They have a large fleet of aircraft. And so you can go pull up and look at their their purchasing history and see that they have um, it's recorded that they actually utilize a stingray. So if they talk about the stingray, then you know they are actually they have a dirt box on board because a stingray does not operate without the dirt box. OK, now uh, keep in mind that anything that transmit is transmitted with the signal can be captured. OK, and so from the air. It's, it's that man in the middle technology. You're basically mocking one of the cell towers to collect data. And from the ground, uh, you could use a vehicle that's parked outside of the area as long as you had line of sight and pull the same data, okay? Now, bottom line up front uh, is that uh, any information that is passed wirelessly can be collected and transmitted in real time to a data center um, where you could have hundreds of analysts on the ground sifting through the intel immediately, okay? Now, here's one of the interesting things about the Stingray. The Stingray technology, basically, it'll allow them to intercept calls uh, and as well as internet traffic. They can send fake texts, they can locate the devices, and also they can inject data, malware, typical spyware, um, and they can actually take control over a person's device. So think about that, and then exfil data. And so, um, if they want to push something to your phone or they want to pull something out, and this isn't just phone, this is anything that, that is transmitting data. So a voting machine, anything like that, they can basically push data in, pull data out. Okay. All right. So with that said, I'm going to show you a video. Just pay attention to this because you're going to notice that I went all the way back and I looked at the election date and uh, you're going to see that, that they were very active in Maricopa County around the election, the days before the election, not so much. The election, they got busy. And then again, nothing really too much before the audit. And then when the audit kicked off, they got busy again. So that said, here we go.
All right, like I said, what are the odds that uh, they just so happen to be over those areas and, uh, and we, we've got, uh, it's, it's almost like a smoking gun. So um, definitely activity we should all be paying close attention to. Now, one thing I have not done is pull the thread to see whether or not that same activity took place at other uh, swing state locations. Um, but I will tell you that uh, that's one of the things we're going to start looking at to see if some of the other areas may have used the same type of, of uh, you know, mechanisms to uh, gather data, transmit data. Um, anyway, very suspect to say the least. So, all right, with that said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bounce over. I want to take a look at some of the things we've, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. Um, again, on the Arizona thing, we'll keep a tabs on it and um, just continue to watch. Uh, my understanding is that they've taken a, a, a 10 day, um, I think, a, you know, a rest and they're going to basically come back. So they're taking a break and doing something else. But um, um, or they paused it, put it on hold. Uh, but and I also my understanding is that they actually started using uh, signal jammers at the uh, audit location so that they nobody could use their cell phones there, uh, which would prevent them from actually grabbing their data. So that's hopeful if that's the case. Uh, but what I will tell you is that um, uh, we will continue to monitor it. And if uh, the traffic drops off over the next, these, this 10 day span, if they are actually taking a break, uh, that's gonna be pretty telling. So uh, again, we'll watch it and continue to report on it like we do with the, the prison site stuff. So, uh, but here we are, we're over the Ukraine. It's nighttime over there right now. Now, one of the things I will point out is that um, now, that one is actually that's a brave soul flying right over that area but this general area right it just right now has been really almost just a big open gap like there's not a lot of traffic going on in here um, and i think that's because the ukraine in general seems to uh, i think they've got a lot of um, anti-aircraft uh, mobile units within the country uh, because of what's been going on with russia and so this is kind of telling. So just an area we want to keep an eye on because when you don't see traffic like that and you see just a big open thing, especially along the border, uh, that's kind of telling of the actual real situation. So just take it in as a data point, right? And uh, the other thing I wanted to look at, we're gonna uh, bump in, let me get down here to uh, Israel. And I just want to see if we've got any traffic going on over there. Now that, that place has been a hot spot last Mercy, at least the last week, I can tell you if any of you guys use the app, I use a, a red alert app that basically tells me every time a rocket or missile has been fired in, um, in, uh, in Israel. And uh, that thing, I went to bed last night. Um, from the time that I went to bed to the time I woke up in the morning, I had 75 alerts. So that means 75 instances where rockets were inbound into, into Israel. And then it continued to go off all day. And I think probably up to now, I probably have 150 just in the last 24 hours. So it's uh, still pretty hot over there. They haven't been uh, allowing a lot of air traffic in, but uh, you've got one that, that looks like it's it is uh, actually just coming inbound or I can't really tell. I don't have uh, altitudes at zero. So it's on ground. So they're just sitting on ground. But uh, anyway. Not a lot. It's the only aircraft I see going on. Of course, it's it's uh, wee hours in the morning there right now, so probably not a normal active time anyway, to say the least. But uh, let's get over here and look at the military map when it comes to uh, Europe and actually the Middle East. And so, again, there's our Forte 10, which is going to be, uh, that is a Q4 drone surveillance aircraft. And so you guys can see that bad dude. So it's your Black Sea it's getting up here into Ukraine. Um, and this is actually the area we were just looking at where I said there's really not a lot of air travel or air traffic. And so you can see this thing, and that was from the commercial side. So uh, I imagine that bad dude is uh, sitting at just under 60,000 feet. It'll get up there and do a lot of surveillance. Again, all that technology we just talked about in terms of cell phones and towers and um, gathering data, this aircraft can do that and about a million other things. And so, it's uh it also is taking you know pictures and and uh running video and uh it's got night vision and all kinds of crazy stuff on it so it's a pretty pretty spectacular uh technology piece and so uh definitely a lot of uh intel going on there for sure and so i see a couple aircraft now we saw this coming the other day too and these are u.s aircraft um flying 
uh, they're kind of looks like they're coming out of Chechnya, uh, but I'm not totally certain. We'll kind of dig in. No, it looks like they actually did not come out of Chechnya, uh, just east of Luxembourg. But uh, we've had several uh, two and three ship C-130s rolling out of that area, headed headed over towards the Middle East and Black Sea, kind of in this general area lately. So uh, definitely an uptick. Now keep in mind it's the middle of the uh, the night there, so. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit in terms of the Middle East, but earlier, just within the last few hours, this whole area was actually pretty active and pretty busy. Uh, seemed to have a lot of inbound traffic, not outbound. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, I don't have persistence on. I probably should have kept it, but um, but we've got a couple C-17s that are on ground in Kuwait right now, and then we've got this uh, C-130J. It looks like it's at about 24,000 feet. That could be a refueler, I'm not totally sure. Uh, you know, just given that jagged line is just because of signal, just it's not one to pick it up. But um, we were looking at a lot of uh, air refuelers up earlier today too on over in this area. So, okay. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. You guys have a, a blessed and safe weekend and uh, I'll be back on, on Tuesday with our normal sit rep. Um, and if anything changes, I'll be on between now and then. So God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear at monkeyworksus.com.